click the bell icon to get latest videos from ekida hello friends today we are going to discuss about what a full wave rectifier with a resistive load and with a midpoint connection is friends in the earlier lectures we discussed about what a half wave rectifier is what a single phase half wave rectifier is and we calculated all the mathematical expressions so in this lecture we are going to discuss about full wave rectifier with a midpoint connection so friends the limitation of a half wave rectifier is that we are not getting the negative cycles of the input ac supply after rectifications so there is a complete power loss and the efficiency is 40.5% as we calculated in the earlier lectures so 40.5% efficiency means the efficiency is less than 50% because of which the single phase half of rectifier is not beneficial for the electrical applications so to reduce this limitations we introduced a new technique which is called full wave rectification with a resistive load with a full wave rectifications with a midpoint connection and a resistive load connected across the output we will be getting both the positive cycles and the negative cycles of the input ac supply so friends let's directly draw the circuit diagram of a full wave rectifier with a midpoint connection with a resistive load connected let's say friend this is vpt what is the primary sine voltage given to a transformer let's say this is vst this is the secondary voltage we are getting from the secondary terminal of a transformer so friends as we already have seen in the earlier lecture this is the single phase half wave rectifier so we were using only one diode but for the full wave rectifier and midpoint connection what we normally do is so we use two diodes so what we have done is we have center tapped the transformer secondary terminal so that we can use two diodes d1 and d2 i will be explaining you in detail the complete operation of this circuit now friends let's say i'm just putting the dots so that the sign convention will be very much easier now during the positive half as you can see d1 conducts so the current flows through rl and through d1 and returns back to the source again but during the negative half cycle d1 blocks the negative half cycle however d2 conducts the negative half cycle in this manner so you can see so in this circuit connection friends during the positive half cycle d1 conducts and during the negative half cycles d2 conducts because when there is negative half cycle or during the negative half cycle here because of this transformer secondary voltage the negative current flows through the resistor and again as the voltage is negative the current comes through the diode easily even if the diode used to restrict the flow of current in the earlier application which was in the half wave rectification process so friends now in this circuit diagram hope you all understood this now let's draw the waveform now friends let's say the source voltage is a sine voltage which is obviously a sine voltage now friends let's draw the input ac supply so let's say now friends this is the input ac supply does this be the o now let's say this is 0 this is pi this is 2 pi yeah and this point is pi by 2 here where the supply voltage is the maximum and it is at the peak 
vs with the peak value of the input ac supply now friends as after rectification we are using two diodes d1 and d2 d1 conducts the positive half cycle and d2 conducts the negative half cycle because the connection is in such a way because we are using a center tapped method for the full wave rectification process so we will be getting both the waveforms and you can see here friends during the positive half cycle the flow of electric current is from this direction to this direction through d1 let's say during positive half cycle the flow of electric current is in a clockwise direction and during the negative half cycle also the flow of electric current is in clockwise direction so the direction is not changing here after rectification if i would like to draw the value of the rectified voltage let's say vlt is the load voltage the instantaneous load voltage which we will be getting like this so obviously d1 conducts the positive half cycle let's say this is 0 pi 2 pi and so on so d1 conducts during positive half cycle and d2 conducts during the negative half cycle so we will be getting also the negative half cycle however as the flow of electric current and the direction of electric current is the same in both the cases so the direction of the voltage will also be the same in both the cases so friends here this is the peak value of the load voltage as you can see here we are getting both the cycles the positive and the negative half cycles after rectification which gets converted to a pulse rating dc value so friends as you all can see from this diagram and from this waveform it is clearly obvious that the full wave rectification is better than half wave rectification now friends let's calculate what is the value of the load voltage what is the value of the dc voltage load current dc current and to be very specific and the very important factor is efficiency we will be calculating the efficiency and we will be comparing the efficiency of a full wave rectifier with a midpoint connection with the efficiency of a half wave rectifier for a single phase supply now friends let's calculate the value of the dc voltage so friends as we all know the value of the dc voltage is given as mathematically one over time and integral of the instantaneous load voltage and the limit of the integration will be from zero to t now friends in the earlier chapter during half wave rectification the flow of current was from time interval 0 to pi but here as we can clearly see in this diagram or in this waveform the flow of the electric current is during both the half cycle positive and negative half cycle across both the diodes so d1 conducts during the positive half cycle and d2 conducts during the negative half cycle so friends as we all can see here this expression will be equal to so friends what i did here is the interval will be from 0 to 2 pi but as per the rules of integration i have taken out 2 right here outside so 2 pi becomes pi now here this becomes so the final value of the dc voltage would be so friends the value of the dc voltage will be 2 multiplied into the peak of the input ac voltage divided by pi now friends let's calculate the rms value of the load voltage so friends as we all know in the earlier lecture the rms value of the load voltage vl is equal to under root this expression which we already discussed earlier in the earlier lectures now if we solve this mathematical expression we will be getting So this is the RMS value 
of the load voltage which will be equal to 1 by root 2 times the peak value of the source voltage so friends you can see the differentiation or you can literally differentiate between the dc voltage during or the dc voltage which we got during half wave rectification which was from single phase and the dc voltage which we got from the full wave rectification the peak value of the load voltage during half wave rectification process and the rms value of the load voltage during the full wave rectification process now friends let's calculate some other mathematical expressions let idc be the value of the dc current which will be equal to vdc divided by rl which becomes 2 by pi into vs divided by rl and the load current becomes vs divided by root 2 rl so if we calculate the form factor as we all know form factor is the ratio of the rms value of the load voltage to the dc voltage this becomes 1.11 so this is very important to remember friends form factor of a full wave rectification is equal to 1.11 if we go for the calculating the efficiency of a full wave rectifier which is center tapped or middle point full wave rectifier which is single phase which is given by reciprocal of the form factor square which becomes equal to 0 point or so friends the efficiency which we found here is 81 percent for a full wave rectification so friends 81 percent for a full wave rectification and 40.5 percent for a half wave rectification so friends we could literally see the efficiency of a full wave rectifier is double to that of a half wave rectifier so that is the reason why the full wave rectifier is mostly preferred for any electrical operation which needs the rectification of a sine ac signal now friends here you can clearly see the efficiency of a full wave rectifier is way better than the efficiency of a half wave rectifier which is approximately half of the efficiency of the full wave rectifier so this is the reason we should go for the full wave rectification for any electrical applications so let's calculate the ripple factor as we know the mathematical formula of the ripple factor is under root form factor square minus one which will be equal to so friends to summarize in this lecture we discuss about what a full wave rectification is what is the need of a full wave rectification what are the advantages of a full wave rectification over the half wave rectification and we calculated all the mathematical expression for the dc voltages rms value of the load voltage dc current rms value of the load current and the most important efficiency which we found that the efficiency of a full wave rectifier which is center tapped or the middle point rectifier is two times than that of the efficiency of a half wave rectifier which is around 40.5 percent for the half wave rectification 81 percent for the full wave rectification and we also calculated the form factor and ripple factor of the full wave rectifier which is center tapped and connected with a resistive load which is rl so thank you so much friend for watching this video please subscribe to ekida and stay tuned with ekida thank you so much